Hi and welcome to Cult Mountain. I'm Britt Foe and I'm here today with Joshua Raphael. Um, Josh is a sculptural textile artist. It's really difficult to box his work into any sort of category. But let's try. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not try. <laughs> I think it's really important that, that it's not pigeonholed. That, that it, you know, I don't know what I am. I don't know if I'm a sculptor, a puppet maker, um, a textile artist, or am I all those things? It, you know, it's kind of. I think really... your your work crosses so many boundaries. It's it is really hard to describe. So I'm really glad that you're here, and you've brought some pieces with you as well that we can sort of slowly go through but um firstly a little bit about you where where are you from originally i'm from the midlands um a small village called Braunston. um but i've lived in london for 17 years now so. great so do you have a studio in london i work from home i, I have a studio our living room is now my studio that's yes, great so. so then you can just work at any time exactly yeah. and, it, and it's cost effective <laughs> which is always good that's great so <clears throat> let's have a look at one of your pieces. Um, basically, there's a whole lot going on here. There's there's embroidery, um, there's sculpture. How do you where do you even start finding inspiration for for your work? Because they they go from really small to really big. It's uh, it's really just you know sort of whatever's around me, whatever whatever takes my interest. Um, it could be be anything from my cat or something in the news, something that, that's ju that's just caught my attention, and I want to sort of play around with the with the idea of it and and sort of see how far I can push it. I don't do uh, drawings or anything before sketches. I, I kind of just just through the hands-on process, I just just make and see how far I can push those, those things. And, and um, yeah, and, and see see what comes up. Are there any sort of central themes? Um, I know you sort of like to brush on the taboo, and a lot of it's quite crude. A lot of the work. Um, is there anything you're sort of trying to say with your work, and from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, sort of. I, I like to play around with with the idea of shame and and taboo, and and sort of um, you know, obviously the the pieces. Um, masturbate and, and I, I kind of really really keen to push that that idea of you know is it really as awful as, as we're we're told it is and, and um and i take that one step further by by actually building onto the back of a bike trailer and as i cycle along the, the pieces masturbate or I, I recently did the queen and uh, and as as I cycled along, she flashed, and she had an enormous penis that were <laughs> going down her leg, and uh, you know, so so, so I'm kind of, <clears throat> I, I just want I just want people to, to question what you know the things that, that we sort of societal so. norms, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What's good and bad. Um, and then so here's one of your amazing pieces, who I love very much. He um, he <laughs> likes to get busy. <laughs> He doesn't need any friends. <laughs> <laughs> He's really beautiful, and you're so you seem to be really skilled in it, embroidery and needlework. Have you studied something like that? I've never. No, I haven't. I mean, I've done sort of MA fine art. I'm doing. I'm at Chelsea at the moment doing an MA fine art, and um, and it's kind of really exploratory. You know, sort of trying different things. But I always come back to test textiles. I just love textiles and. Uh, and sort of what they mean, sort of how, how they use to cover up the body. And I'm trying not to cover up the body. I'm trying to, to sort of expose, expose the body, expose you know. The body. And, but again, using the thing that, that you use to cover it up. And, um, and yeah. And where do you get your materials from? Because there, there seems to be a massive collection of different bits and pieces. Where, where do they all come from? Yeah, it's, it's really things that people give me, you know, I've, I've collected them over the years. It's, it's nearly always free. It, I'm sort of, I'm really keen to, to recycle and, and sort of bring new life into into things that, that you know, sort of get get forgotten or, or are no longer used. I, I think it's really important to... To give it just, a new life, Just I give suppose. it a new life, yeah. That's great. And the, the attention to detail is, is really beautiful on, on all the different pieces. And it is sort of puppetry as well. You're really, really mixing genres and ideas, and I, I really love your work. Thank you. So I just wanted to talk about one of your your pieces. Um, at first glance, it's it's quite cute. It looks like a, a butterfly or a dragonfly or something. But then, at a closer look, it's actually 
it's not and it's actually quite rude um, and really sexual um, and I was just wondering in your work what, what are you trying to convey about sort of sex and guilt and things like that in society it seems to sort of be your mishmash together how um, am I on the right track yeah I think I think um, that, that basically you know from, from the moment we're born we're labeled it's a boy it's a girl you know and it, it's kind of it, I'm interested in artists like Paul McCarthy um, Natalie Duesenberg and um, you know people who play with those those sort of ideas of, of social correctness and what is you know we, we kind of it feels like we've got a bit lost about and we're, we're sort of forgotten who we really are and, and sort of the animals within us and and I'm really keen to get back to that and, and get back to sort of the rawness of, of the the animal in us. Um, so sort of and, and animal actions I suppose. Yeah. And um, which we can't really escape is most of your pieces are masturbating or of some sexual nature. Um, how does that come into the sort of psychology of, of your work, the masturbation issues? Um, I, I mean, you know, one of, the, one of the things I like is, is that people can take away from, from the work whatever they want. You know, for me, it's, it's about, um, it's a natural thing to do. It's, it's kind of, it's the one time you don't have to try and impress somebody else or, you know, you, you can just be, <laughs> be true to who you are. And, and I think um, that's, that's the essence of it from my point of view. Um, but, but, but I think other people get different things and, and, and that's really important. Um, I, I, I really, really sort of might be quite difficult because I'm trying not to be pigeonholed and, 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 and that's part of the work. I don't want, I don't want to be stereocast or typecast or, or uh, you know, he's, a, he, he's a guy who does wanking puppets or, you know, it's yeah. kind of really important that it goes beyond that. Um, but also not, you know. If if you look at it and you just have a laugh, that's fine. But but yeah. there is there's a there's a deep conceptualness there's a deep, yeah, behind that. Absolutely. Yeah. And and it's whether you're prepared to take that time to to, to go actually that far. go that far, or if you you know if you don't want to, it's fine. But but uh, I am. Um, that's great. Yeah. And your your materials, so they they're all found, you say, and given to you. Um, why, why is it important for you to work with these materials and not buy new new materials? Why is that important? Um, I think I think because um, I, I just I just love um, when people give me stuff. I think I think that's really you know old clothes that they no longer want or um, just uh, things that I find things that I like. I go to charity shops and I find something and for ten p or twenty p you know things that are cheap things that that I can just you know come out of the shop and start making something that's that's really exciting for me and and sort of having that that impulse to just go ahead and do it you know sort of without worrying about um what what materials you need and I, i'm i'm very much a um a doer you know sort of i work through the process of doing and you know sort of find um find answers to things within the process of doing it and um, yeah. and and that's why this is really important it's found bits of wood and it's just whatever I find I just make with it and and, and see where it goes because I really don't have a perceived idea you know a perceived idea so or, that the idea sort of flows through you you're really open to just receiving it's organic. Yeah, ideas it's, and and taking them where they where they need to go absolutely it's really organic and and i think that you know sort of i, I like that i like the dirtiness of that some of the fabrics you know it can be the history the, the history of where yeah. they come from and then it's all meshed together definitely and, and that's really important and and then when you put them together they're like it's like a an old toy that's just been played with to death i think i think that's it's really a whole new thing yeah yeah definitely it's good because i think a lot of people who want to do art sort of are held back by materials oh I don't have the right canvas or I don't have the right this and that it's for you you just create no matter what you have and I, I think that's really beautiful yeah and I, I think leading on from that is, is you know sort of when, when I 
finished my degree, it was so easy for me to just sit in my studio and sort of twiddle my thumbs going, oh, when's the next show coming up? You know, and then, and then I decided that I wasn't going to hang around. I was going to build onto the back of my bike trailer and, and cycle the work around and show an audience that wouldn't necessarily go into a gallery. Yeah. And that become really exciting and, um, and something that I've been doing. And, and, you know, sort of some exciting things have come from that. Meeting you, we, yeah. we sort of bringing the work to show you was, was sort of really exciting. And I got, I got um, uh, asked in residency at Studio 1.1 in 2011. And that was really exciting, and that was because they saw me in the street in Liverpool Street, and just uh, just so thought it's it was... it's that one tiny action, just getting yeah. getting yourself out there, really. Yeah, yeah. You never know who's looking. Yeah, exactly, and and you you're you're the maker of your destiny, you know. Well, you, That's you, great. You either sit back and let it happen, or or you go and make it happen. And make it happen. Yeah. So where can we see the rest of your work? Well, you can either go to to Court Mountain's website. I've I've got a link there. Um, Studio 1.1 sort of on, on their website and also you can just type in my name I've got a blog spot it's quite an unusual name Joshua Raphael um, so, so yeah well thank you so much for coming down and telling us about your artwork I can't wait to see your new pieces um, thank you for joining us and tune in again next time when we interview another amazing artist here at Carp Mountain <laughs>